Hey everyone, I got a question on my Instagram page from Saint Sirius, who were wondering uh, if I could explain how the filter daemon works, and of course in conjunction with the, the container, which we can find in the standard particle shelves. So let's look at the ingredients here. We have the container, and let's just create another emitter, because we need something to work with. And in the uh, daemon's rollout, we have way over here the filter. Filter, you don't actually need to connect it to anything because you assign uh, in the properties here. And let's say we have this circle 01 and I'm going to move it uh, like so. And I'm going to uh, turn off the grid. And we can, or actually let's keep the grid on for a while. Uh, we can just make the blue color a little more visible. And let's do spheres and do like 0.01. And on the container, just to differentiate from these, between these two, let's make these pink or something, or uh, I don't know, orange, fun times, yes, sphere. 0.01. So what you want to do with the filter daemon is you can move particles from one emitter to another based on a certain uh, condition. So it's pretty much like writing code. Anyone who's written an expression or some programming will uh, kind of uh, recognize the terms here. Uh, what we need to do is go to the filter. We need to assign the target first. So we want to take from the circle and move to the container based on a certain number of conditions uh, or a certain condition, I should say. Uh, so target first, container two, source is then uh, made available to us. So let's click the hamburger icon and assign the circle. And I want to do, uh, you can say greater than speed, for example, which is the default. So you can move the fastest particles you have into another particle system in order to, I don't know, maybe you have the same set of demons affecting them, but on that second particle system, maybe you have a speed kill or something. What I'm going to do just to make this really, really obvious is use uh, lower than. If you look at my axis setup here, you'll see that I'm emitting in the negative Z axis. So they're around like two or three uh, when they're emitted and they cross over downward. So I I'm going to say lower than um, position Z and value zero, which is the dead center of the scene here. So what should happen is that once the particles cross the midway, they should, if we select both of them, turn from blue into pink or uh, orange was it I turned it into orange uh, so far so good so why is this useful well let's let's uh, take the example that I prepared uh, this example Taurus and hide that for you here and then I'm gonna fill object and I had it selected so it should be pre configured to emit from that. Oh, maybe I missed out. I actually didn't have it selected, I realize. Uh, anyway, it is selected now. And what else? So let's go to the filter and go to the container still, and then from the fill object. And this time let's do, for example, like I mentioned previously, there's a lot of ways you can use this. Um, you can do a lot of different type of logic and tests for, you know, pressure or velocity or vorticity or whatnot. But I'm going to do another really obvious thing. I'm going to use uh, position Y in this case. And I'm going to say that position Y is going to be lower than and then I'm going to actually make an object instead. So I'm going to take the null object and I'm going to set everything below or maybe let's say everything above. Every particle that is actually above the value of this null is going to be moved into the container. So let's see how to set that up. So um, then we're actually dealing with uh, greater than. And instead of putting a value in here, we can say edit curve. You actually have to go into edit curve and then you can go to, let's say dvars and I'm going to pick the null and I'm going to pick the position y. So now we have uh, made that expression. And what we then can do is we can take the null and actually animate it. So I'm going to reset out of this 
and I'm going to have it selected and I'm going to press the K button, which is going to give a keyframe on all the transform channels. And then let's just go to, I don't know how long you want this to go on, uh, four seconds and we're going to animate it downwards and press K again. So we can see that's the motion we have. And let's just look on the filter. You see that this is being updated as we go along because it's a, it's a expression link. So far, so good, right? So why would we want to do this? Well, in this case, I'm going to have all of the particles on the fill object. They're not going to have any demons or anything or whatnot. And uh, I'm going to collide with, between the two. So I'm pulling a bi-directional arrow. So control left mouse drag to this one and the same way uh, back. But the container, so they're going to collide with each other. But the particles that actually belong to the container are going to have drag and they're going to have gravity. And then let's just reset and let's realize that we probably need some more resolution here. So I'm going to go with 10 maybe. Yeah, looks pretty good. And I can take up the, so I, you could say that on the container, yeah, we probably just want to match that. I don't think it would be a problem because it's just going to be forcefully moved into there. Uh, but let's put it at 10 as well. And let's give it a little higher viscosity, like 10 maybe. And let's also visit our settings. So we should have uh, min subset 1, 300. So let's go between 1 and 70 to save some time. And let's see how slow this is. So you'll see that as soon as that null starts to drop, then all of a sudden are they forced by gravity to start dropping down and the way that they're colliding also with the other particle system makes this into somewhat of a melting effect you could say and I could of course I could have assigned the um, the x-axis whatnot I could have done a bunch of different things and you could look around you'll find there's a ton of tutorials on on the matter that are a little more advanced but I just wanted to make this um, known in this little quick tip what you could use the what you could use the um, filter daemon for and uh, yeah then about that container so the container in itself really isn't that much of a deal actually it's just an empty emitter it would do exactly the same thing if i created a circle emitter and i turned off the speed here so it's not going to emit, let's see, where is that? Here, zero. So that effectively means it's not going to be emitting. But uh, And then I'll pick that instead. But it's going to have exactly the same kind of um, effect. So we can verify that by resetting. And then look at the circle particles instead. I didn't turn those orange, but yeah, same effect. I mean, the only difference really is that um, the container is pre-configured um, in a way. I mean, it just cleaned up, basically. There's not so many bells and whistles here. Why the circle emitter actually has properties which are meant for dealing with um, actually emitting particle from this. So maybe uh, let's try to get the same look by putting that viscosity at the same value and the resolution at the same value, then we should have pretty much a similar emission that we had before. So now they're kind of pouring outwards there as we go. So that's, yeah, like I said, that's just one example of what you can do with this. And the container isn't really anything else than an emitter without emission properties. Uh, and in the end, you know, whatever object you pour these into with the filter daemon is going to have the files written out to, to disk without any emission. Um, yeah, so that could be, that could be one use case for it. And you could even do a bit of scripting to make these actually, because what's going to happen now is as the um, particles get transferred to the other particle object and start flowing down through gravity, then they're actually going to displace 
the uh, field object particles as they are colliding and kind of push them away. But you could actually make them stick in place by a bit of scripting. There's a freeze command uh, that you could use, for example. Or you could use a specific daemon to maybe try to hold them in place, like a super high drag, for example. You could have that. Um, let's see. I could do a drag force with, you know, like a value of 50 or even 540 by accident. And now it's going to be a bit of a different uh, result because they're going to uh, resist uh, the collision as much as they can, these particles. So now it's kind of going to have a more of a muffin top look to it. Yeah, I hope you find that useful. That's really it. That's what I wanted to show, to show today. And uh, this is actually only available for the standard particles. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that they haven't adopted it to Diverso yet, uh, or Hybrido. So if I create a Diverso domain here, empty domain, and I go to the filter daemon, you can see that I'm not able to, to pick that domain here. So this is exclusively for, for the um, standard particles. Anyway, I hope you found it useful and that you might want to try your luck with this and maybe create some kind of, I don't know, melting effect or something like that. Super low res mesh, obviously, but you get the point. You could uh, throw in a 3D scan in here and do this based on, I don't know, X, Z or Y uh, position and uh, just mesh it uh, together and uh, you will get kind of a melting effect. Um, there's also some scripts around, I think, in order to, um, you don't specifically have, you're not restricted to using the um, the melt, you're not restricted to using the filter daemon if you want to create a melt effect, that's just probably the most efficient way of doing it, but there are tons of other ways of doing it. There's a scripting tutorial around out there that uh, maybe makes this a little more dynamic and kind of uses, I think it uses nearest neighbors or something. Anyway, that's all I had for you today. I hope you found it useful. Do give me a thumbs up if you did, and if not, then let me know in the comments what I could improve for the next one. And if you happen to know someone who might benefit from this type of tutorials, then I would love it if you could spread the word. And obviously I would love to have you as a subscriber to the channel, so hit the button if you want to take part in upcoming updates. And last but not least, I always love seeing what you can create with these techniques, so feel free to hashtag or mention me uh, at your social media platform of choice. The details would be on screen as we speak. Good luck with your projects and stay safe and see you around. Cheers!